On this worksheet, we're going to be practicing assigning stereochemistry to chiral carbons in molecules. The first step is just finding the stereo centers or the chirality centers or chiral carbons. Those words are used, used interchangeably. So if we are looking at our first molecule here, um, what I like to do is just first of all find all of the carbon atoms in the molecule, and then I like to go back and eliminate anything that is a methyl group, a CH3, and also eliminate any CH2 group. Groups. They can't be chiral because they have two or three hydrogens on them. So now I have found the chiral carbon and now I'm ready to identify its stereochemistry. If all four bonds are not being shown, then I like to draw in the fourth bond. It might be a little bit confusing about where do you add that fourth bond, like where does it belong in the molecule. The fourth bond, if you're adding, is typically going to be a hydrogen atom, like that's the thing that's missing. Um, and whether, like where you choose to draw that hydrogen atom, you want to keep in mind that the straight line bonds are always side by side in the drawing and then the wedge and the dash bonds are always also side by side in the drawing and it's not going to matter if you draw it to the left or to the right it won't make a difference just don't put it up here in to, to separate the straight line bonds so once we get all of our four bonds in place we can focus on identifying um or prioritizing those four things. Hydrogen is always low priority, so I'm just gonna give that guide number four right off the bat. Now we're comparing these three groups. The first thing that we want to do is focus on the atom that is bonded directly to the chiral carbon. So for all of these, it's a carbon versus a carbon versus a carbon. Um, we are comparing these by atomic number which is the number that we get off the periodic table. These are all atomic number 12. When there is a tie, then what we do is like go the next layer out. So we look at what is bonded to each one of those carbon atoms. So to compare the next layer, that's going to be a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and another carbon, uh, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and another carbon. And then for this guy, a hydrogen, a hydrogen, and a hydrogen. And so in this case, what we're doing is comparing these sets of three. We're comparing carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen versus carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen versus hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Again, comparing it by atomic number. This is the loser of those, so which means that this is going to be our next lowest priority. This hydrogen was our lowest, so the methyl group is our next lowest. Now these two, we have a tie again, so that means we have to go out one more layer go out even further I'm going to get a different color going here and so we now we want to look at what's bonded to these carbons this is a hydrogen 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 and we're going to be comparing that to a hydrogen hydrogen carbon this time we're comparing the ones in purple hydrogen 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 versus carbon hydrogen hydrogen starting to sound kind of funny the hydrogens are losing the carbon hydrogen hydrogen is winning now it's kind of hard to even see anymore because we've done all this drawing so just for a second i'm going to erase these colors that i've made i'll put them back but i'm just going to erase these for a second to make it a little bit easier for us to see the numbers one two three four when we are once we've got our priorities in place we're going to ignore number four and we're going to look at the relationship between number one to number two to number three and we're looking at whether it is clockwise or counterclockwise. Although for me personally, remembering which is clockwise, which is counterclockwise, kind of tricky. So from one to two to three, when I trace in that shape, that is exactly what I would be drawing if I was going to be drawing the letter S. Like I could make this. One to two to three is the path that I take when I draw the letter S, which means that that is an S carbon. I'm going to put those colors back and we will mark this guy, this guy right here, as an S. This is going to be a capital letter in parentheses. Let's try this on our next example. So this is our chiral carbon right here. Let's go ahead and add the hydrogen in place. Hydrogen is always going to be our low priority substituent. Now we want to look at what else is attached. We have a chlorine versus a carbon versus a carbon. I'll put those in colors. And our chlorine has a higher atomic number. So that is going to be our um, highest priority of these. 
priority number one. Now we have to break the tie between these two carbons. One of them is going to be two, one of them is going to be three. We want to think about what's attached to each of those carbons since they are t a tie. The carbon on the left has three hydrogens, the carbon on the right has two hydrogens and one more carbon. So now we're comparing three hydrogens versus two hydrogens and a carbon. Again, focusing on the highest atomic number. That's going to be the group that's over on the right-hand side. So that's going to be number two. This is going to be number three. Ignore priority number four and connect from one to two to three. That's not going to give me an S, but it is. I mean, that looks kind of funny. That is how I would draw an R. One to two to three. Maybe that's kind of hard to visualize, but this is definitely not the path that you would take if you were trying to draw an S. So that means that this carbon atom right here is an R. And let's take a look at our next example over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw my hydrogen over to the right this time. So this one is a little bit different. We're gonna have to be a little bit careful with this one because our hydrogen is on the wedge. The rules that we used, the standard rules that we used that I ap applied for these first two examples are all based on the idea that the hydrogen is on the dash or the low priority substituent number four is on the dash. And over here, hydrogen is gonna be on the wedge. So we're gonna have to mix things up a little bit. Hydrogen is number four. Looking at our other substituents, we have a, a carbon, versus an oxygen versus a carbon going by atomic number oxygen is higher atomic number than carbon so that's going to be number one we've got two carbons in a tie so that means we want to look at what's attached to them and compare those atomic numbers and of all of these blue things that I've drawn in this is our highest atomic number which means this is going to be number two this is going to be number three we want to ignore oops ignore the hydrogen kind of like don't forget, oh, it's on the wedge. So that means we're gonna have to like, gonna have to factor that in in a second, but ignore the hydrogen for a minute and connect from one to two to three. And that's not gonna give me an S. One to two to three is gonna give me an R, but that would only be the case if hydrogen was on the dash. Since hydrogen is on the wedge instead of on the dash, we have to just reverse everything. So even though it's from one to two to three, which looks like an R, the hydrogen is on a dash, so that means that this molecule is an S. When hydrogen or number four substituent is on the wedge, that means that the molecule is upside down in terms of how we should be looking at it in order to apply R and S stereochemistry. When hydrogen is on the wedge, that means that everything is uh, looking at it from the right direction. So I'm just going to I'm going to write correct. This is how we want to look at it. We want to look at it with the hydrogen on the dash. When we're looking at it with hydrogen on the wedge, we're looking at it upside down, which means that we are assigning stereochemistry upside down or backwards. So if it looks to us like it's an R, we have to remember that it's upside down. And in reality, if we were looking at it in the correct orientation, it would actually be an S. So heading over here to this molecule, this molecule has got two stereocenters. We'll do this one first, and let's go ahead and draw that hydrogen in, noting that it is on the wedge, so that means we're looking at it upside down or backwards. Hydrogen is low priority. The chlorine is going to be high priority. We've got a couple of carbon atoms that are in a tie, so we want to look at what is attached to those carbon atoms. Um, the one that is on the right hand side has got a carbon on it. The one on the left has only hydrogens. So that means the one on the right hand side is a higher priority than the one on the left. One to two to three looks like an R, but again, we're upside down. So this guy is actually an S. And now over here for this carbon atom, let's sketch that hydrogen in. That hydrogen is in the correct position, which means we're looking at it in the right direction. Our fluorine is number one, our hydrogen is number three, our CH3, or excuse me, hydrogen is number four, our CH3 is going to be number three, our CH2 is going to be number two. This is one to two to three. That is an R. This time we're looking at, wait, <laughs> I'm getting confused. One to two to three is an S. My brain is getting tongue-tied. And now we have one more molecule to look at. Now this one's kind of tricky. So we're just gonna go you know, from left to right with these. Here is 
Our first chiral carbon that we're going to focus on is this guy right here. We have a hydrogen, which is our number four priority. We have a carbon, wrong color. We have a carbon versus a carbon versus a carbon. So that's a three-way tie. We want to move out and look at what's attached to each carbon. We have a CH3. We have a, a CH2C. And then we have a CH. C, C. So comparing the sets of blue atoms, we have three hydrogens versus two hydrogens and a carbon versus two carbons and a hydrogen. That one's a little tricky. Um, our three hydrogens are going to be next lowest. Two hydrogens will be number two. Three hydrogens will be number one. On our chiral carbon, this hydrogen is in the correct position, so we're looking at it in the right direction. When we go from 1 to 2 to 3, that's not how I draw an S. That would be how I draw an R, 1 to 2 to 3. So that would make this carbon atom an R. Now, in order for me to be able to move to the next atom, next chiral carbon and assign stereochemistry, I'm going to have to erase all of this stuff. Otherwise, it's just going to get in the way. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. Like that. And I'm actually going to get rid, rid of that wedged hydrogen too. We'll move on to this guy right here. Hydrogen is number four. And on this carbon, we have a carbon versus a carbon versus a carbon. The carbon, so it's a three-way tie. The carbon up top is a methyl, CH3. The carbon on the left is connected to a carbon, a hydrogen, and a carbon. The carbon on the right is connected to a carbon, a hydrogen, and a carbon. So we've got three hydrogens versus two carbons and a hydrogen versus two carbons and a hydrogen. So we know that this guy is number three. And that means that we have to continue with this strategy of like moving out and seeing what's bonded to what. We could choose um, this carbon right here if we wanted to. That's going to be a bunch of CH3s, so that's not going to get us anywhere. That's just going to be another tie, so let's not do that. Although, you, you know, you can kind of take whatever path makes sense. So what we're going to do is focus on this guy right here, and we're going to see what's attached to him. And I'm going to do that in purple. Um, so this guy has got two hydrogens and a carbon. This guy has got two hydrogens and boom, back to the same carbon. So in a situation like this, where you're trying to apply or assign stereochemistry and you're trying to figure out le uh, left to the left, of <laughs> going around the ring to the left, going around the ring to the right, which substituent takes priority? If your two directions meet up in the middle, like we just did right here, they came together in the middle, that actually means that this molecule is symmetrical at that particular spot. I'm going to find a neat way to erase here. Um, so we have symmetry in the molecule at this particular position, which means this way around the ring and this way around the ring are identical, and therefore this carbon atom is a chiral. Now you may have caught that before I even started assigning stereochemistry, but I wanted to go through the motions of like practicing assigning stereochemistry to that. Because sometimes when we're super focused on assigning stereochemistry, we don't even take the time to ask ourselves, is it even chiral or not? Okay, so for our last carbon atom here, this one is not chiral. We have that hydrogen, which is number four. We've got a methyl group, which is almost always going to be number three. If we go around the ring to the left versus to the right, we have a carbon versus a carbon. Um, the carbon that is on the left side or the top side, that's attached to two other carbons and a hydrogen. And the one that's on the bottom is attached to two hydrogens and a carbon. Two hydrogens is going to be lower priority than one hydrogen. Our, um, back to our chiral carbon, this hydrogen is in the correct position, so that means we can ignore this and we're just going to connect from one to two to three which is not how we would draw an S. That would be how we draw an R. I feel like I'm just saying carbon and hydrogen over and over and over again. Uh, and so there's that right there. 
Whew. Now we are going to draw the enantiomer of each one of the molecules in problem number one. In order for me to be able to do this, I need to clean this, clean all these drawings up. So I'm going to leave the stereochemistry labels on them, but I've got to get rid of all the other stuff that's on there because it's just too much for my eyeballs to look at when there's a whole bunch of other stuff drawn in there like that. So in terms of drawing enantiomers, there are, you know, there's two different strategies, at least two different strategies of what you would want to do. One option is to draw a mirror image literally, but the other option that I always find to be easier is to draw the molecule. I'm, I'm doing this one right here. Draw it exactly the same, except for change all the wedges into dashes and dashes into wedges. So I'm not, I'm not doing any kind of mirroring. I'm keeping everything in the same spot. All that I'm doing is changing from a wedge to a dash. Whatever method you take when you're doing this, you have to only do one thing or another. So either you mirror or you switch the wedges into dashes and the dashes into wedges. If you mirror and also switch the wedges into dashes and the dashes into wedges, you're basically just going to be drawing the exact same molecule all over again. So those are all of my enantiomers. All I've done is switched wedges into dashes and vice versa. Now we're going to draw diastereomers. Diastereomers are molecules that have at least one, but not all, of the chiral carbons converted. So that means we are going to switch at least one, but not all of the chiral carbons. If we switch all of the chiral carbons, we're drawing an enantiomer, drawing the mirror image. If we switch none of them, we're just redrawing the molecule. So I want to switch, um, for this first one, I'm gonna switch the chlorine, but I'm not gonna switch the fluorine. That would be an enantiomer. And for my second one, because I'm supposed to draw two, for my second one, I'll switch the fluorine, but not the chlorine. Yeah, so those are both enantiomers of the original molecule. And then, or excuse me, they are diastereomers of the original molecule. They are enantiomers of each other. And then for this one right here, this one, there are more options for the correct answer because it's got three stereocenters. I want to switch at least one, but not all of the chiral carbons. And like I said, there's gonna be more than one correct, or more than two options that you have here. The only thing that you cannot draw is redraw this molecule here, or draw, don't draw this molecule because that was the enantiomer. Now it says identify the meso compound in problem what? I don't know. Well, there's only one meso compound on this whole entire worksheet. A uh, meso compound is a compound that has chiral carbons but has an overall, I shouldn't say it as a but. So the molecule has chiral carbons. Also, the molecule is symmetrical. So when you look at the molecule as a whole, you can find a plane of symmetry that runs all the way through the whole entire molecule. And that's this tricky guy right here, the one uh, where we were going through and assigning stereochemistry and we found a carbon atom that kind of looked like maybe it was gonna be chiral because it's got a wedge here, but in fact it's not because there's a plane of symmetry right down the middle of the molecule. That makes this molecule, and also it's an antiomer. Uh, a meso compound. This guy right here, meso compound. I'm just going to redraw it. 